What's up, boys and girls? Another college hoop handicapping exchange for with Robert Fringer. We're talking Saturday college football. I know it's early. You're probably watching it, and you're like, Saturday? What about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Who cares? Saturday's basketball card is through the roof. So we should, we wanted to come and talk to you about some games that's going to be going on Saturday. So cash those tickets Wednesdays, cash those tickets on Thursdays and Fridays, and double up on Saturday because it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic day of college football. Who needs bowl games on college football? Uh, our college basketball Saturday. We got hoops. The first game is, should be outstanding. It's going to be an early game, the noon game, Tennessee at Memphis. Should be exciting, even though Memphis, who me and Robert can probably be a starting uh, start for that team right now. But what do you think about this first game and the early game, Tennessee Memphis, a struggling Memphis team? I think you can't trust either one of these teams. <laughs> Basically, we have two coaches. Rick Barnes and Penny Hardaway that are just exceptional recruiters. They are phenomenal at recruiting talent and building talented rosters, but they're both awful. And I mean awful in-game coaches. Uh, Tennessee, their biggest game of this year was probably one of the worst college basketball games I've ever seen. I, I, don't, I don't say that lightly. When they played uh, in New York City against Texas Tech, it was, I think it was 55 to 51 in overtime. Tennessee shot six for 40 from three-point range. That's not that's not a typo. They shot six from 40. Okay, after you missed maybe like 20 three-pointers, you'd think that a good coach would be like, hey guys, maybe get to the basket. They ended up shooting 19 for 71 from the field, eight for 16 from the free throw line, and they lost by four in overtime. I don't trust these guys at all. But I trust Memphis even less. They have lost four straight games. And we're talking really bad losses. They lost to Murray State, at home, they lost to Georgia and Ole Miss, two teams that are worse than Tennessee. I have this number coming in at, with Tennessee probably around a six or a six and a half point favorite, okay? Especially if Memphis is still on that losing streak. They play a game before Saturday, so we'll see if they can get off the schneid there. But the fact of the matter is, this game is on a neutral site, but it's gonna be more pro Tennessee, I believe. And like I mentioned, the fact that Memphis has already lost to two SEC teams, Georgia and Ole Miss, that are decidedly worse, decidedly less talented than Tennessee, there's just there's really no way to trust Memphis at this point. Yeah, I agree with that one. The Memphis plays early in the week. I think uh, it all depends on how they play okay. on this one. Uh, yeah, I'll get Alabama, who's upset Gonzaga already, which will probably to, to, uh, to break them down uh, in our next matchup. But I agree with you. I want nothing to do in this game. Thank God it's a noon game. I usually don't play that many early games on Saturday because I'm still trying to get three cups of coffee in my system. And I'm excited to watch England. There's Premier League soccer on Saturday. So it's really hard for me to get pumped up. But uh, I agree. We want nothing to do with either of these teams. But another noon game should be fantastic. The fifth seed. That's right. The fifth seed right now. The Gonzaga Bulldogs uh, play Texas Tech. Not Bobby Knight's Texas Tech, but Texas Tech Red Raiders, who are 7-1. and one. They have a nice matchup on Saturday. Who do you like in this one? Weird. This is got a weird start time. I have this game scheduled yes. for 1 p.m. Eastern, which would make it, what, a 10 a.m. West Coast start out there in Phoenix? I, I I don't know what's going on with that. And sometimes with those early starts, it's tough. You, you know, these are college kids. You don't know if they're going to wake up ready to play in a game like this. But if we put that aside and assume that that's going to affect both of these teams equally, I definitely like Gonzaga. I see this number opening around – Minus five and a half. I think it will be bet upwards. I think more money is going to come in on Gonzaga. Now, they have lost two of their last four games. They lost to Duke, and they got smoked by Alabama. So that might take some of the steam out of people just throwing money at Gonzaga. Uh, but I think that they can get right here. The main reason is I don't trust Texas Tech at all. I don't think they're very good. Uh, their non-conference schedule is ranked number 355 out of, I think, number 360 teams that are rated so they haven't played anybody the only two teams that they played they played providence and they played uh tennessee as i mentioned they were completely unimpressive in that game against tennessee yes they won but they didn't play well and they lost against providence so gonzaga has played in these types of big neutral site games against big name teams already this season so i think that they're going to come into this game a little hungrier a little bit more prepared and i just think that they have more top end talent texas tech tries to win with defense. They want to grind people down and then be efficient offensively. But I don't think they're going to be able to slow down 
uh, this kind of juggernaut Gonzaga offense. And if Gonzaga can get that lead out, get it up to 8, 10, 11 points, I just don't think Texas Tech has the firepower to uh, get back in the game and get back in the back door. So I, I definitely like Gonzaga now. I do, but that scares me that time. I mean, Timmy probably won't even have time to shave for this game because it's so early. So this one scares me. Uh, I would love to see if this was an evening game because I would probably look more into playing it. But uh, the time slot for against I can't remember the last time besides a March Madness game that Gonzaga has ever played this early on TV. And I, and I do believe this is a CBS game. So this is going to be weird watching a Gonzaga game while I'm still eating bagels. So it's going to be just just funky on that one. But you know what? It's in my backyard on Saturday. Should be a fantastic one. The first game of UCLA and North Carolina. It should be a great game. Probably a lot of Tar Heel Blue will be walking the strip, spending money, so my taxes keep on going down. Uh, should be a fantastic, fantastic matchup. I really like. Uh, I'm trying to see how I'm going to lean on this one. North Carolina plays Furman uh, on Wednesday, so I'm going to be excited to see how that how they can control the pace. I think UCLA can probably run. Uh, the pace, maybe not as fast as Furman's going to on Wednesday, but this one's going to be interesting. I'm really excited what the total is going to be on this one, if it's going to be in the high 150s or the low 150s uh, for me. But this game circled on my sheet for maybe a Saturday play. What do you think? I'm a little bit torn on this one. I obviously like UCLA just in general, just on spec for this year. They brought back so much talent from last year's near national championship Team, you got to love Johnny Juzang, and you got to love Tiger Campbell, one of the, the best and most efficient point guards in the country. A lot to like about UCLA, and they've been very good against the number over the last couple of years. But I think that North Carolina is really undervalued right now. Now, I know they're only like 2-7 and seven against the spread so far this year, so it's tough to trust that team. But I don't think people are giving this team enough credit. I like this North Carolina team. I like the talent that they have. I was all over them in that Michigan game when they hosted uh, top 10 Wolverines team, and they really ran them out of the gym. They have a lot of transfers, Brady Manick, Dawson Garcia, so it was always going to take a little bit of time uh, for this team to adjust. They have the new coaching staff, so a lot of change uh, in Chapel Hill. But as the season goes on, I really think North Carolina is one of the most talented teams in the ACC. They made that statement win against Michigan, this would be another great opportunity for them to pick up a huge resume building win. And again, if that number starts to creep up, okay, I have an opening with UCLA minus four and a half, minus five. I think you're going to get more UCLA money in this game, and that might start to nudge that, that line up. If it gets above a two possession game, I might look at North Carolina because even though UCLA is the better, they can both score, both teams can score. UCLA has the advantage here because they're the better defensive team, right? They're more committed on that end. But if that line starts to nudge up, I'm not discounting that North Carolina could go into Vegas and steal an outright win in this game. I can guarantee you the ticket count will be all over UCLA because they play in Vegas, seems like half their home games or games are in Vegas. They've been playing at T-Mobile Arena. They used to play at MGM a lot. That's where the Pac-12 tournament was. So they're always, they're very comfortable in Sin City, North Carolina. Maybe the bright lights and the shows uh, might be a distraction. But I agree with you. If the number gets too wacky, uh, you have to look at the Tar Heels. But again, I'm, I'm going to be looking at the Tar Heels uh, closely on Wednesday's game to see how I'm going to look at this game on Saturday when I play the Bruins. Part of me also kind of wants North Carolina to get blown out in this game, though, if that makes sense. Because because like I said, I see an undervalued team when I look at North Carolina. Okay, I really do. And that's surprising, right? Because they're a marquee team. They're North Carolina. But if they get blown out in this game, all that is going to do is up the value on this team going into the ACC regular season play because the ACC is bad this year. And I think North Carolina is better than a lot of those teams. So this is one of those kind of win either way. If, if you bet on North Carolina and you win your ticket, awesome. You won your ticket. If you bet on North Carolina and you lose, that's going to set you up for maybe a bigger bet down the road. The second CBS Sports Classic game in the backyard of uh, my house in Vegas. What a great matchup because Ohio State plays Kentucky. Ohio State coming off a big win against uh, Wisconsin. Don't tell the bosses. If he doesn't know that, he might have been fishing. Uh, against Kentucky, who are coming off a bad, bad loss to a, to a Notre Dame team who is not the same Notre Dame team we've seen in the past. So I really want to see how Kentucky rebounds from this one. And again, I kind of want to see how Ohio State plays. If they play like they did against uh, Wisconsin, 
uh, Big Blue Nation might want to change the channel and watch uh, some bowl games or some NFL football because this game could be ugly quickly. I was really, really impressed on the Buckeyes uh, the other day when they played the Badgers. What do you think in this one? I think Ohio State's going to open as a small favorite in this game. I have them opening right around minus two. I don't think it's going to be a very big number because I think the books are going to anticipate getting a lot of Kentucky number, a lot of Kentucky action, especially if they're posted as an underdog. But I love Ohio State here. I really like Ohio State. I'm still kicking myself. I had a very good Saturday in college basketball last week. Hit my seven-unit play with St. Mary's just running UC Santa Barbara off the off the court, but. I'm still mad at myself that I didn't make a play on Notre Dame in that game because of one of the things that we talked about last week. This was Kentucky's first true road game. That matters. When you've played a bunch of schlubs like Kentucky has in the, in the comfy confines of Lexington with that home crowd around you and you've just been burying awful teams, some of the worst teams in Division I, then you go on the road and face a team that's really excited to play against you Okay, maybe they're not as talented, maybe they're not as good, but they got the home crowd, they got a little momentum going behind them. I'm really mad that I didn't have some action on Notre Dame in that game. That was a miss for me. Hopefully I can make up for it here with Ohio State. I think Ohio State is bigger, better, stronger in the post. I think they're a little bit more experienced uh, on the wings. I don't love their backcourt play, like their point guard play. Ohio State can, can turn the ball over a little bit, but I just like the way the pieces fit for Ohio State more right now than what I've seen from Kentucky. Basically, Kentucky has failed in its two biggest tests. They lost in that opener against Duke, and they lost in their first true road game uh, against Notre Dame. Other than that, they've played a bunch, of, a bunch of schlubs. Ohio State, we've seen them beat Duke. We've seen them hammer Wisconsin. You know, they lost to Xavier and Florida, but those were very good competitive games. So we've seen Ohio State play at a high level. We haven't seen that from Kentucky yet. So until I see something from Kentucky, until I see them win a big game like this, I'm absolutely betting the other way. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, like I, said, I really want to see how Kentucky rebounds uh, from that bad loss against Notre Dame. Here's a great matchup that I can't wait to watch. Uh, is the, I think, 6 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time, 7 you East Coast Times. Oklahoma State, who I already talked about them when I cashed that ticket against the Vikings the other night, against the Houston Cougars. And let's face it, Sasser is going to be the best athlete on the court for Houston in this one. If he goes off, this could be another nail-biter for Oklahoma State, who just had a battle in overtime victory against the Vikings. Uh, I know Houston's coming off that loss to Alabama. It, uh, if I'm mistaken, I don't have a friend. They lost by only two points, wasn't it? Or uh, close, yeah. uh, something around that to Alabama. Yeah. I like Houston in this spot because I think they're going to have the best athlete on the court in Sasser. Uh, what do you think? I think it's interesting. When you look at this this game, Oklahoma State against Houston, and you say one of these teams are ranked in the top 15, everyone would just assume it was Oklahoma State, right? But that's how kind of far they've fallen and how much Calvin Sampson has been able to elevate this Houston team. I think this number is going to come out high. I think, it's, I think Houston's going to be around a nine, nine-and-a-half point favorite for part of the reason that you touched on before is that Oklahoma state just isn't playing well right now. They had the back-to-back -back losses to Wichita, Wichita state and Xavier, and then they needed overtime to beat Cleveland state. And I know that's a very good Cleveland state team. They're one of the teams that are favored in their conference, but come on, Oklahoma state playing in Stillwater, uh, they shouldn't need, they shouldn't need overtime to take care of that one. They also needed overtime to be oral Roberts before that. So they're on an zero and four against the spread run. It's funny. Uh, Oklahoma state was one of the best teams in the country last year against the spread with Cade Cunningham. He left five of their top six scores came back and this just isn't the same team. They haven't played well. They haven't been as good against the number. It just goes to show how talented and how great of a player Cade Cunningham is. They don't have that top end talent this year. Houston absolutely does. They play, they're one of the best defensive teams in the country. Them and Baylor, they play very similar style. Uh, they do have Marcus Sasser, so they will have the best player on the floor. Um, I, I think that this is a situation where Oklahoma State could get could get run out of the building. Yeah, I, I agree. And here's another one that could be run out of the buildings. The last game we're going to talk about is the Baylor Bears, the number one team, or maybe uh, this is Wednesday, maybe not the number one team by Saturday because who knows how many number one teams we're going to see uh, of college basketball going against probably one of my most disappointing teams of all college basketball, the Oregon Ducks. Uh, the Ducks losing three out of five. They lost – they're just coming off a bad loss on the road to Stanford, which they shot poorly. And you said it just now – Houston and Baylor, top two top defenses teams, they held the Oregon Ducks to only 49 points when Houston played them. 
boy, this game could be ugly. I'm so glad UFC is going to be on TV, NBA, NHL. I'll watch, I'll watch Paul Woodley 2 boxing because this one might be over by halftime. Baylor at Oregon. Who do you think? I know who you think is going to win it, but how bad could this be? Well, I have this number opening with Baylor around minus nine, minus nine and a half. And I do think that it might even be bet up, even though they are playing on the road. That's a true road game at Oregon. Uh, I hate to answer a question with a, with a question, but Raphael, how much should we value Oregon's home court advantage in this one, really? I mean, Houston took care of them, even if it was on their home court or practice or cafeteria. Uh, so uh, I would not put anything on Oregon home, away, neutral, cafeteria, outside, Nerf, PlayStation, whatever. I'm just not sold on Oregon Ducks. So I'm throwing out home court. I'm just putting out Baylor's defense versus team that struggles to score points right now. Yeah, Oregon is definitely not cohesive on the offensive end of the end of the court. It's strange to see that from a Dana Altman team. He normally has yes. that veteran point card like Peyton Pritchard for all those years and Chris Duarte after that. He does not have that veteran point guard this year, and you're really seeing it, it take its toll. But I don't know. Baylor is the number one team in the country by far. They just absolutely annihilated a very good Villanova team. Uh, I'm going to be looking to catch Villanova on a bounce back this weekend. Uh, so I don't want to jump in front of that train right now, that Baylor train. But don't be surprised if Oregon plays its best game of the season yet. They will have home court. They do have a fantastic coach. There is talent on this team. They do have some good players. They are not devoid of talent. And they have a chance to upset the number one team in the country. So I think that they're going to come to play. They're going to play better than what we've seen. And like I said, this is going to be a really big number on Baylor because of how bad Oregon has been. Uh, this is this is one I'm not going to pick a side on, but I am just going to warn some people. Just be careful. It might not be as easy Baylor money as you think. Now I say that the Bears will go out and they'll win by 17, and it'll be it'll be a laugher. But uh, I don't know. Something about this game just just smells off. And I think Oregon might come to play a little bit. Well, the Ducks' leading scorer, Will Richardson, was he going to average 12 points a game in this one instead of the team leading 11-something? I, I don't see it. Uh, as, again, people, if you're watching this, there's other great stuff to watch on TV because this one could be over uh, by halftime. But there you go. Saturday's top games for college basketball. Don't forget to check us all out on Doc's YouTube channel. There's some great content. Don't forget to check out Doc's homepage to see Robert Fringo's fantastic, fantastic articles. Again, Look above, click that link up there, get that free $60 account. Great Christmas present, great New Year's present, just great presents in general. Don't forget to click on that account and get $60. But there you go. There's myself, Rafael Esparza. There's Robert Faringo. Have a fantastic, fantastic rest of the week. Get that shopping done. Stay safe, stay healthy. Deuces, everybody. Have a fantastic week.